So today I'm going to look at this Keefley 228A voltage and current source. I picked this up off of eBay for, well, it's about $700 something like that. It's pretty expensive, but it's in the acceptable range for me when I'm buying a disc here. I've already found a couple of issues with it, which I've recorded some video about already, which I'm going to put in after this. The handles are broken off, which is like this, and they're basically disintegrating, turning the wax, and yeah, you know. So if you've got handles on one of these things, don't use the handles because they'll just fall off and you end up dropping it. This has got day codes in it from 1988. Now I've already done stun the voltage changeover, so I've changed the voltage on here just now. Again, I've recorded a video, so I'll show you that next. So I'll just note this one thing. Can you hear it? There's something floating around the side. So, although it's got seals on it, I'm definitely have to open this up. Well, I have to anyway to change the voltage, but there's definitely something floating around the side, which may be a sign of a big problem. Someone's powered this thing up with that floating around. Let's see if we can find what it is that's floating around. Okay, so forget about it. Aha, I can see something sitting over there in the corner. That's probably what it is. The question is where it came from. And this is from this card. Maybe it's one of these card screws which has fallen out. There could be more than one screw floating around. Right, let me get that out. Here it is. So there's a screw, the same as the ones which are holding on the bits of chassis here, in various places. But these screws have all got washers on. So there could also be a washer floating around. I did notice this on the side, it's got these like straps here. This side's like broken straps here. See that? I think they used to have carry handles in there and they're broken. I think it used to. Anyway, they, they've had it now, long gone. Right, let's float this around again, see if we can find some more screws. Because there could be more than one. And there's this plug here which has fallen off. That's interesting. That plug is not attached. Why is that plug not attached? Could have just been vibration made it fall off. It isn't secured very well. Maybe it's supposed to be cable tied over there or something. Hmm. Could be a few things going on with this, you never quite know. Let's flip it over. Yep, another screw fell out. And the piece fell out. Right, where did I go? There's a piece that fell out. It's another screw, just like the other one. So this is going to require a fair bit of investigation, I think, to see what's going on. I think I need to pull the bottom cover off as well in case there's something trapped under there. I have to undo these screws as well. I think maybe I'll do. Yeah. So I can't see any missing screws yet. So the question is where did they come from? They could have been from that card, like I said. They come loose and dropped out. Entirely possible. But I'm suspicious. <laughs> It pays to be suspicious with these things. Yeah, nothing else dropping out. Okay, so it probably was just from this card here. They probably be from there and they've dropped off. That's what I think it is. It's more clear for inspection might show something else up, but yeah, it's probably fine. So I want to change the line voltage in this thing. Now I've got the thing open and actually got the loose screws out and that sort of stuff. Now line voltage switch is actually under here. It's underneath this assembly. Keithley have actually done a really nice design thing here. You have to pull this card out for a start. Which gets stuck because it's got these spades on here. Now this is the board. So in case you everyone needs to have the board for it, this is what the board looks like. And there you go, if I try and get the light on it right, you can see through it and see where the traces go. Alright. And I'll flip it over this way. And that's what the rear looks like. Okay, same deal. Get a shadow on it so you can see the traces. So if you don't have one of these boards for your unit, maybe you can replicate it from this. Okay, maybe help you, I don't know. Just here, you can just see that slot there. That slot is directly above the switch, which is for the voltage selection. So instead of having to take all this assembly out, which is what I thought I was going to have to do, you can go through that switch, and actually just through there, I doubt I can get it on camera though, so the switch is directly below it. And on the PCB, it's got a marking of 230 volts this side, and the other side, let me see if I can actually see it up. So that side says 115 volts, this side says 230 volts. And the switch is currently in that direction. So I need to stick something down there, 
pop the switch over the other way to make it 230 volt. Then that's the conversion done. Screwdriver, pop the switch over. That should now be on 230 volt. Let's double check I actually moved it. Yep, that's gone. So that should now be ready to use on 230 volt, which means I should be able to power this up now. Hopefully. So I think before powering this up, I just want to do a check on the power connector here. Now, you think, well, why are you measuring resistance across the transformer? What's the point of that? You know, the chance of the transformer going bad is quite low. I mean, it, it can happen, but it's very low. Well, what can happen is not so much transformer, but capacitors. I mean, is you're often line input filters on either the actual socket itself as part of the filter, or there's ones on the, on the actual board it all goes to on the main power supply. And those capacitors can go bad. Often you see reefer caps, especially this kind of era equipment. And the reefer caps can blow and short out the rails and stuff like that. So it's always worth checking on this older gear, the transformer connections, or well, the power input connections here. So I'm going to push the switch on the front, make sure it's pushed in. So that's active. I'm just going to measure across here and here. What do we get? 71 ohms, that seems fine for a transformer. That's nothing onto all there. Let's go to earth. Mega ohms, no problems there. So there's nothing particularly bad. That should be fine, at least initially. It could still go bang after I power it up, but it's not shorted yet. Right, let's try powering this up for the first time. Got it plugged in. I've got a hoppy meter over here, which will show if there's any issues, hopefully. So power switch is off. No current being drawn, so there's nothing at all, which is good. Let's turn the power on, see what happens. Well, it looks like it's basically functioning. That's a good start. Fan's a bit noisy though. It doesn't need a big fan on this thing, it's not surprising. How do I change this thing? I've got no idea. I don't know how to use this yet, obviously. What's the maximum voltage you can do? 10. Okay, 10 volts there. We've got this selection over here as well. Let's see what we can do here. So 0 0.1, so 100 milliamps it looks like. So 100 milliamps at 10 volts looks like the limits of what this can do. Well, I think I should look at hooking up to the output and actually seeing what we're getting out of it, see if anything's coming out at all. Meters hooked up to the terminals on the back. Let's see if this will actually turn it on. There we go, we've got 10 volts coming out. Brilliant, that's actually working. Well, that's nice. Maybe I don't have much to fix on this thing, if anything. I mean, it is actually outputting. Right, well, I think I've just got to figure out how to use it then. So my initial thoughts about what this is actually capable of doing for the output was wrong, it can do much better than that. I was thinking it's a bit limited. If you use a keypad to enter the values instead, you'll get different ranges. So if I wanted to do 0.1 amps, that's what I get there. I do 1 amp, I can do that. I do 10 amps, I can do 10 amps. I'm not sure what the maximum was, I think it was 10. Yeah, I think 10 was the maximum. Yeah, so 10 amps maximum. The same thing for the voltage, you can do the same over here. So you want to do 10 volts, which we are doing before. We can also source the sink. Anyway, look at that after. So 20 volts. I think that voltage is out of range because of this current setting. So if we go back to current, put in one amp again. Go back to the voltage here, the 22. That should now accept that. Yes, it does, 20 volts. Right, so I think this can go up to 100 volts. I think that's what we could do. Yes, 100 volts output at one amp. Do 100 watts output this thing. So let's stick this on these terminals again. Set the output on. There we go. Get 100 volts. So that's good, that's actually working. Go back to 1 volt. That's fine. Uh, 0.1 volt. Perfect. That's looking good. Happy with that.